Hey folks. So I decided recently that I was going to refinish and uh, upgrade my Telecaster. I got this guitar back in about 2015 and it's a great guitar, it plays very well. Um, I didn't really have any qualms with it, I used it quite a bit live as well as in the studio. Uh, but I was never really happy with the finish, it's got kind of a crappy uh, relic job and it just lacked a little bit of mojo so I decided I would completely resurface it and if I'm going to go to the trouble of refinishing it, I may as well give it some hardware upgrades as well. The back of the neck also uh, was sanded through in a couple places, which was my fault because I wanted to smooth it out and accidentally went through the finish in a couple places. But that's an easy fix. Uh, I picked up some really excellent nitrocellulose lacquer from a company uh, nearby called Oxford Supply. And uh, they do a really, really good uh, Fender custom color suite. You can get basically everything that you would need there. And uh, so I got the white primer, their Sherwood green, and their clear coat. So as you can see here, um, I decided to reroute the body for a new pickup. I am putting a humbucker in the neck position. So that was the first order of business. Second, as you can see here, I'm just giving it a bit of a scuff sand to give the original finish a bit of tack so that the um, primer will stick when I go to spray it. Um, the other thing that this is doing is going to reveal basically where all the little nicks and dings in the finish are that I'm going to have to fill um, if we want to get a healed surface, which I do. Um, so here we are with the fully routed body. It's been roughly scuff sanded, and uh, the next order of business is to fill all of those gouges and scratches and nicks, uh, which I'm doing with a body filler called Bondo. Um, this is usually used for automotive uh, fixes, but it works really, really well for wood and, as you can see, guitars. Um, it's not very pretty when it goes on, but all of this is going to come out in the wash once it's sanded back and refinished. So here you can see the body after it's been sanded back. Now most of the big uh, scratches and gouges have been filled at this point, but uh, invariably when you put that first coat of primer on, it's going to show you everywhere that you missed. So we will be coming back to refill a couple small spots after the initial coat of primer. So you can see that here. I have uh, actually did a relatively good job with the body filler, so there were just a few little outstanding scratches and dents to fill at this point. Um, and then this is going to get one more dusting of uh, primer, and then we're going to go into the Sherwood Green color coats. Here we are after the uh, two coats of primer. It's looking really good. I don't want to go on too thick with this, although nitrocellulose lacquer doesn't really spray very thick anyway. Um, it's really just a thin skin of paint um, that allows the wood to resonate and it's, it's a lot thinner than your average polyurethane, which is what goes on most guitars these days. As I said, I decided to recoat the back of the neck with some nice clear gloss. Um, that one got about four or five coats, I want to say, and uh, it was just basically to freshen it up. I didn't do much more than that, but it's looking pretty good. And here we are after the first coat of the Sherwood Green. Um, it's a little bit streaky because you don't want to go too thick and get drips and whatnot. Um, but after that first coat, again, I gave it a, a light sand just to uh, double check that the surface was perfectly healed and looking the way that I wanted. And um, it's not too pretty to look at right now, but at the end of the day, this is going to be all well worth the extra steps. And here we are after our second coat. You can see it's starting to build up a really, really nice uh, full solid color. Um, this Sherwood Green does have a slight bit of a uh, metallic fleck to it, which is quite nice. Uh, it's not quite as noticeable as some other uh, paint companies, but um, I'm quite happy with the finish on this one. Here you can just see me going through the spraying process for uh, a coat of this uh, Sherwood Green. You'll notice I'm moving relatively fast and uh, quite light coats here because, um, as I say, with nitrocellulose, it really is all about several very, very light dusting coats. Um, you don't want to go too heavy or you'll get drips and sags and it can cause all sorts of problems. And the way that nitro really works is that um, each of those individual thin coats kind of melts into the previous coat. Um, so at the end of the whole process, you don't actually have what would seem like six or seven coats of paint on the body. It really serves like one very thin coat. So 
So following the Sherwood Green, here I've gone and thrown on a couple coats of the High Gloss Clear. Um, this is really where the finish is going to build up to the point where I can wet sand and polish it to a, a really nice mirror shine. Um, which you can see here. This is after the first wet sanding on the back of the body. Um, I left the finish for several days, close to a week really, to let it harden to the point where I can um, sand and polish it. The front hasn't yet been polished, so you can see it's got a pretty good gloss right off the gun, but it's kind of got a bit of that orange peel texture that we don't want, so that's where the wet sanding and polishing comes in. But you can see held up to the light, the wet sanding really does smooth out the finish and we're going to get rid of most of those swirl marks in the process of the polishing, which I'm using a uh, basic automotive turtle wax for. You can use all kinds of different um, polishing waxes and compounds. The turtle wax I just find works really well for me. It's easy to get, it's pretty cheap, and it uh, gets the job done. Here we are at the front of the guitar. I didn't really bother to do too much sanding or polishing in the area underneath the pick guard because obviously that's going to be covered. Um, here you can see the, uh, the polishing process. It takes quite a lot of uh, sweat and elbow grease to do this. It's quite a slog when you're polishing by hand. I decided that I didn't want to use um, a machine to polish it because I was worried about going through the finish. Uh, because, like I said, the nitro is quite thin, that is a very real possibility. So I took the extra time and just did it by hand, which at the end of the day is kind of a nice way to complete a project like this. And here we are after the uh, full polishing. You can see not all of the swirl marks are gone, but I'm not all too worried about that. My guitars tend to get beaten up and scratched when we play them live and whatnot, and uh, this guitar will be no exception, so best to just uh, leave it to the gods, so to speak, and let it get dinged up as it will and not worry too much about the perfect shine. Here we are though after the uh, new hardware has gone on. I had some more wiring to do um, and fitting it for a new bridge, a uh, roller bridge and uh, a Bigsby style tremolo system. I also decided to put in a GFS uh, Surf 180 pickup, which is a take on the Surf 90, but a humbucker version. Sounds very cool. Beyond those uh, upgrades though, the rest of the uh, guitar is pretty much the same. The bridge pickup is really great, I didn't want to change that. The knobs, the switching, all of that was just fine. So uh, that stayed as is. So here's the final product all strung up. It's going to take a little bit of time to settle in with the new bridge and whatnot, but uh, overall I'm really happy with this. Uh, this upgrade. It's a great sounding guitar. It looks great in my opinion and I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. At the time of recording this fresh guitar has already been used to write some new music for Oak Ridge Avenue um, as well as gotten a decent amount of use in the studio with Hoxley Workman so uh, I guess listen out for it on some of the new stuff. Uh, we used it to write and record a new song called Night Drive which I'm pretty excited about. Anyway I'm gonna stop rambling there but uh, Hopefully you'll get to hear this on record and live soon enough. Cheers.